like who is the Holy Spirit, right? Um, of course, we can't see the Spirit, we can't feel the Spirit, not in a tangible way. And I think that is the a struggle I had for a long time. Yeah. Um, the tangibility of God and of Jesus. The Holy Spirit to me is we always call the Holy Spirit the Paraclete, which means the Advocate, mm. and. I think to me, he's really a guide in our life. Um, the Holy Spirit is is the gift of God Himself, the gift of God's Spirit, um, and the heart of God itself. Um, but then I think through this uh, passage, it has really affirmed me of um, how the Holy Spirit is made present in my own life. And for me, I think the Holy Spirit as an advocate is very important because I feel that um, I guess many of you might resonate like. Um, we're very used to directing our own lives. Um, and very often these direct directions come from our own, I guess our own um, emotions or our own desires. But sometimes these are desires of the flesh, right? And to invite the Spirit really to me is to allow Jesus or God through the Spirit to really um, direct my life or direct my actions and things like that. A warm welcome to you as we begin our Novena to the Holy Spirit. We pray the very first Novena in the Church, the Novena to the Holy Spirit, preparing for the great feast of Pentecost, the birthday of the Church. Jesus reminds us in Matthew chapter 7, you will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. And in Luke 24, 49, And behold, I am sending forth the promise of my Father upon you. But you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit enkindles in us the fire of His love, so that we may bear the fruits of His Spirit in us. As we await to celebrate Pentecost, let us pray together with Mary, interceding for us. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. The fruit of love has come alive in my life mm, through the strength that I have found in God to forgive and to be compassionate, especially to people whom I find it difficult to forgive. Increased strength to forgive has also freed me from festering any anger in my heart, especially to those who have hurt me through their words. But having been able to forgive them has given me that freedom to love even more fully. I think love has manifested itself in my life in me being able to will the good for the other. 
because uh, a lot of times um, when you live for yourself, it's um, self-love basically. Yeah, but um, the fruit of the spirit of love that comes from the Father is the ability um, to desire good for the other person. And that also means that uh, you have to die to your own personal desires sometimes. But yeah, it's um, the ability to grow out of myself as well, to think for others instead of thinking of myself first. Um, the fruit of love has manifested in my life as a, um, a way to recognize my own belovedness um, and as well as the belovedness of others. Um, to be able to recognize that um, I'm a child of God and that others too are children of God. Um, and how much God loves me enables me to, to live generously for uh, the good of others, um, that is loving them. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Holy Spirit, we know that you are the Counselor of Truth, our help in need, and the one who fills us with the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, we pray this very day to come into greater communion with you. You so graciously work to intercede for us to the Father, but also to comfort us with your peace that goes beyond all understanding. Holy Spirit, please come. Holy Spirit, today we ask for godly counsel and direction. As it says in Psalm 37, 4, to delight yourselves in the Lord, so we boldly seek to do so today. Following the will and heart of the Father is our greatest desire for we know His plans are best for us, and in the end, glorify the Kingdom. Holy Spirit, please lead us by Your wisdom, discernment and kindness throughout our lives. Holy Spirit, we praise and thank You for the love lavished upon us. Holy Spirit, we seek and so earnestly crave to be in Your presence, to feel the inner work of You in our own hearts and minds, you so graciously give comfort, truth, and love. Holy Spirit, we welcome you this very day. In the name of Christ Jesus, Amen. Brothers and sisters, today we begin the Pentecost Novena and we'll talk about the fruit of love. Let me begin with the passage from the Acts of the Apostles. They were all in one mind and one heart. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them that all that there were no needy ones among them, because those who owned lands or houses would sell their property bring the proceeds from the sales and lay down at the apostles' feet for distribution to anyone as he had need. The birth of the church came about with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. 
This event caused a radical transformation in the lives of the disciples, especially in the way they lived and witnessed their lives for others. Jesus said, Every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. Question, what fruit is your life bearing today? What fruit do you want your life to bear in the future? Today we begin with the reflections on the fruit of love. As we reflected on the passage from the Acts of the Apostle on the life of the early Christian community, we hear of this extraordinary way in which the community bonded together. They were of one mind and heart, in a way they cared, shared their possessions, and looked out for each other. This love for the neighbour is known as agape love, or selfless love. A love that does not focus on self, but is concerned with the greater good of the other, and does not expect anything in return. Because of our sinful state, the only way that we can experience agape love is when we consciously draw closer to God and experience His love. Here, Mary becomes the model of agape love. As a spiritual mother, she showed selfless love, concern and care for the community and stayed together as community while they were coping with their doubts, anxiety and pains within them. On the human level, Mary, who saw and experienced the pain, torture and crucifixion of a son at Mount Calvary, could have abandoned the disciples and stayed away from the community, just like Thomas, the doubter. Yet she chose to be with them in a selfless manner, to give hope and peace, especially in the darkest moment of their lives where nothing made sense at all. With the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the disciples experienced new vision, new hope, new sights and new energy to go forth boldly to proclaim the risen Lord to the other. We now take the reading about Mary also from the Acts of the Apostle. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bethlehemio and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Praying with Mary O Mary, my good mother, faithful spouse of the Holy Spirit, Deign to obtain for me from our God of love all his fervour and light. Do place me in his divine flames, that he may consume me with his love, awaken my faith, and fulfil my hope. O Holy Spirit, through Mary's intercession, I confide myself to your purifying and sanctifying love. May you dwell alone in me with the Father and the Son.
like as John was saying, when we pray, we invite the Holy Spirit um, to really take over the prayer and be the be, be the one speaking in the prayer, be the one sharing the truth with a friend when we are praying for a friend. Um, but you know, as I continue to pray to God and ask the Holy Spirit to dwell in me, I do feel that the Lord is inviting me to be more patient with uh, where I'm going in life, you know, in my career, um, in my vocation, whether I'm going to be called to the vocation of marriage or to the priesthood, you know, not to rush to my destination, but to embrace that journey. I think a, a desire, um, a simple desire, no matter how imperfect, um, for the Holy Spirit and to ask God for that, I think God will be very, very willing to just um, lavish that gift upon us because He knows how much um, we need it as well. Today